On this week's episode of Crowdfunding Nerds, we talk emails, email segmentation, email send frequency, email content, and email subject lines. Let's get into it. Game begin. Let, 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 let's go. We're the Alliance. <laughs> Amazing. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another awesome episode of Crowdfunding Nerds. I am your host, Andrew Lowen, and I am joined, as always, by Sean and not Rick. In Rick's place, we've got Donnie Chase. Donnie is the newest employee at Crowdfunding Nerds. Um, he is uh, awesome and, um, you know, way cooler than Rick. Uh, Definitely a movie now. star. Yeah. That's what it says on my business card. Way cooler than Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, so uh, yeah, now on, on this episode, I... So I had an experience this week where I um, was kind of frustrated dealing with a client that was um, managing their own email marketing. And they they had some really big gaps that I see all the time in, you know, when people are are running their own emails. And I'm like, I just wish I had a resource that I could send people that would be like kind of the ultimate beginner's guide or maybe even not beginner's guide, but the ultimate guide for companies to do a good job on their email marketing. because the, you know, even big companies totally screw up. And I was, you know, the, the client that I, d- I was dealing with has been in business for, you know, 15 or 20 years. They've got a significantly sized email list. They've got multiple projects that they've been working on. So they're not a new company, but they are making the same types of mistakes. And so, um, you know, whether you're a seasoned pro or you're, it's your very first project, you definitely um, should listen to this episode if you are taking on your own email marketing. Um, so that's kind of the goal of the episode. Um, how do you guys want to start? Where's Where's the number one place people go wrong in email marketing? I think we maybe need to break up um, the differences between the types of uh, clients as well, because okay. I think a lot of these issues that we're gonna we're, co- we're gonna cover become problematic over time. So in, in the beginning, they're probably you don't have to worry about it too much. If this is your first campaign and you're launching in two months, some of the stuff. Um, it's good to sort of have it foundationally, but it's really going to hurt you in the long term. So mm-hmm. it's trying to, if if you currently are doing some of these things to address this, to resolve them. And but if you're just starting out, you want to just keep these things in mind and you can implement yeah. them later. They're not, maybe not too urgent if you're just starting out, mm-hmm. but it's it's good to know. So I do think we need to sort of separate yeah. between people who are just starting out, have like zero people on their email list or maybe like 500 people or 200 people versus the people who have like, you know, 1,500 or, you know, 15,000 people on their email list. It's sort of a different ball game. I mean, particularly if, if you're talking about long periods of time where you have different IPs that you've been promoting and, and stuff, um, there's, there's going to be differences uh, and things that we have to yeah. cover. Or even one game that's been, you know, like Deliverance. I've had an email list that I've been keeping active since like 2018. Um, and that so that's a long time, only one game. But um I just in this one game, I experienced the some of the challenges that you know we deal with it, with um, clients that have large lists, multiple games, and that kind of thing. So um, yeah, so let's let's talk about what is what where do people go wrong when they have been around for a while? So let's start there. So I think the biggest thing is not segmenting your email list. I think. When you have an email list that you've had for a long time, and this is what the client you're talking about, what we discussed with yesterday, because I was on the call as well, is that people just naturally lose interest in projects or they might change emails even. So they don't unsubscribe, but they're not opening your emails. And you're still sending them emails and they have no intention of ever opening your email. And all that's doing is harming your email open rates, which then affects your sender score, which then impacts the people who are opening your emails, it means that you're less likely to reach them because you're going to be thrown into spam filters or into promotion filters. So yeah. the key thing, the biggest takeaway that you <laughs> from this is learning how to segment. And you can simply just do a Google search. How to segment with you know MailChimp. Just mm-hmm. do a Google search. You can find there's lots of information on it. So we might not go into like the nitty gritty of how to do it, but we can probably talk about the overall philosophy. And maybe yeah. it's a good place to start, Andrew. I know you have a very specific philosophy of you yep. have your basically... Your super like inner circle, your super fans, and then you do like a resend to them, and then you have your never openers. So if you want to talk about the the strategy and philosophy of how you set things up, then that could probably get us in the right direction. Sure, sure. And uh, what I could <clears throat> what I could even do is uh, I could show I could I could share my screen. 
All right, so I'm going to share my screen here. We'll uh, we'll talk about my emails. Um, so I I have um, so these are the last emails that I sent. Um, you guys can see. So I'll look at our May email. So we've got uh, the main list, my main resend, and my my never openers. So this is what I would consider a uh, gold standard for um, people who have been in business for a while. You want to separate out, as Sean said, your never openers. Those are the people that, you know, I, that's what I call them because they never open your emails. Um, and I, when I send a regular monthly email, um, you know, first of all, never openers, there are people that you meet at conventions that you meet online, that, um, you meet wherever that specifically give you a spam, like their spam inbox, the inbox, you know, people have multiple email accounts at this point. They have, you know, most people have two and one of them, they keep really clean. And the other one is just filled with tons of spam and whatnot. And that's the one that they use to sign up for things. Now, um, that's not always the case, but in some cases it is. So um, you're, you know, when they, they don't want to hurt your feelings at a convention because it, your game was like only okay, but they gave you their email anyway, but they gave you the spam email, not the email that is super duper serious. And over time, if you aren't pruning those, they will just drag you down. So um, I segment never openers, people who never open my emails. And I do this um, in a very particular manner. Um, let's see if I, I'm not, I'm not actually going to show it because I just don't want to accidentally, you know, reveal someone's email um, and then have to cut this in a dumb way. But um, you want to, you want to segment people that have received all of your last five, as far as email interactions, they've, they've received every one of your last five emails that you have sent and never opened any of them. So um, for me, I actually do like it, you know, if I can, I do the last 10 emails if they've received the last 10, uh, by the way, I, I will now, now what I have to do is I have to get specific about, um, you know, the people that are on my main list, um, versus the people that are on my never opener list. I obviously need to make sure that people that are on the main list that have never opened, those are the people that get added over time. You know, I'm constantly, every email I send, I will re, uh, re update my never opener list. And sometimes new names make it there because they've, you know, they've fallen off. They haven't opened the last five or 10 emails. So I have a list of about, um, I want to say 1500, um, uh, no. Yeah. So I've, I've closing, uh, so 5,600 people on my email list and then a, around, I want to say it's like 1200 on my never opener list, um, out of this. So when we go, when we go back into campaigns, you can see that my main list was sent to 4,285 people out of those 5,600. And then you can see at the time, May, uh, we had 1,379 people um, were kind of my never openers. And that's a lot of people, but you can see um, the results of my, um, you know, my email, like the May email, I had 51% over 2,200 of the, you know, of the 4,285 people actually opened this email. That is a very high number. Um, it, you know, anything that's 40% or above is good. Anything that's um, under that could use improvement. If you're hovering around 20%, that's actually a, a really bad sign um, that you, where you need to kind of fix some stuff. But uh, before we talk about like how to fix it, um, so you do want to segment out the people who never open emails. That's the first thing. Um, the next thing is uh, you you definitely want to resend. So there are these people. So 51% of my list that I sent to here opened my email. Um, however, that means roughly 48.3% of people did not. And so what I do is I create a uh, another email and I send it a few days later. So I replicate the same email. I send it to the people that are like, um, you know, that will, that, that received it, but didn't open it. And the only thing I change is the subject line and you get a heavier chunk of your, of your fans to, to, to read, you know, a lot of the time people will look at a subject line and they will say, okay, that's for deliverance or that's whatever. 
and they won't open it because they're like, all right, I'm, I don't have time to do that right now. Or the subject line doesn't interest me or whatever. And they'll say like, oh, that's cool. And then they'll skip it. Right. Um, so I actually was able to win back another 500 people, 520 people um, of my main list. So of these 4,285 original recipients, I had over 2,700 of them open my email. So it's a, that's a really large number um, for, you know, for the, you know, this, this, this list, it's very, very useful and very important. Now the never openers, I only send like once a quarter. So 151 opens, 151 people will make it off of the never opener list and become a part of the main list. And that's why I say I have about 1200 of them now. Um, and then in terms of setting up that main list segmentation, that's kind of the more technical term. If you, if you're a male champion, you need to create a segment. How are you setting that up? Are you sending it to people who've received the past five emails and open them? What's the kind of like the, the segmentation so, uh, structure? It gets really, it gets really simple. So it gets really simple. <laughs> if you have a never openers, so what I do is I tag those people never openers. Then what I do is I send to everyone unless they're tagged never opener. Um, Got it. Okay. And so that's, yeah, it's the simplest way to, to do it. So, yeah. Um. And, and, and now I, while we're here, look at the frequency of these emails. Like I, did we do this like very recently on a, on a last podcast or am I just blending client meetings in? Um, so people ask how frequently should I be sending emails? Look, I, I mean, it's, um, it's, uh, it's now like the end of May. So, you know, we're not sending emails out, um, you know, like we usually send out once a month. So once a month, that would be like this May kind of combo you've got the 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 main email list the resend and then maybe a never opener email and i do not resend the never opener email but look you know we had a golden geek award email uh you know opportunity to win which you know i've kind of chronicled recently on the podcast and we didn't win but um i want you guys to see how frequently i sent these emails so i sent this one on may 12th i sent this one on may 11th uh let's see that one on may 7th this one on May 9th, this one on May 7th as well. And then that one on April 23rd and, uh, or yeah, there you go. April 23rd. So let's see. And then we also sent April 18th, 16th. So between, so in a one month period of time from April 16th, yeah, I sent one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight emails. I sent eight emails in a month. And that includes resends though. So folks you haven't opened the original so you could say maybe four four emails right so just to show you guys like this this last chance main and then the last chance main resend um i peppered my list like a significant amount of times and you can see look at how many people unsubscribed um six i had six people at 2609 unsubscribed and then if i switch reports to the last chance this is like these are like the last emails that they get I had out of 4,400, I had 15 unsubscribed. It's a very normal number. Um, I had two people market as spam. You can see two abuse reports. That's like, I never signed up for this list or I market as spam because, or, or repetitive content or whatever. Um, two people. And as long as you're below like 0.4, if you're at 0.3% of your list is saying you're, you're abusive or less, you're fine. Um, so I got two, which is like 0.005. Or something like that. Just ridiculous. I don't know. Ridiculously low number. So um, anyway, so that's how often should you send your emails? You should absolutely send them once a month. And if you're not sending once a month, there's a problem. Uh, so when I say send once a month, I mean, send your email, do the resend of that email to the non, the people who received it, but didn't open it. And, um, you know, and you don't have to send more frequently than that, but when it counts, you should send emails. You should absolutely send emails, um, you know, and, and as, as evidenced by all of these campaigns that I, that I ran, like people don't get annoyed with emails. It's not an annoying thing. It's just something that they will not open if they're not interested and they will open if they're interested, they will find value in what it is that you send and they'll appreciate you for it. Or they'll find that, Hey, this person is just spamming me with information that is not new or interesting or worthwhile. So they'll stop opening your emails, right? And uh, we we can talk about that too. But generally, you always want to send once per month. We probably should talk about 
the cadence of emails for a crowdfunding or Kickstarter event. So I can outline quickly what we, we tend to do. So let's assume that you have two months before your launch and you want to, you start collecting emails through your ads and you, you just, you're sending emails to schedule. So what we do is we set up an automated welcome email, we kind of consider that email number one. It's the kind of cornerstone. And that's usually a very short email, 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 <laughs> pretty short email <laughs> that directs people to your community space. So that's kind of what the, in, the intention of that is. Then the second email we send is an email that directs people to your community space. So this would be a longer update of here's all the things like that have a newsletter, like a style. newsletter. Yeah. So this could be, you know, the latest reviewers you've covered your game, maybe some behind the scenes design backgrounds or a little introduction to who you are, something that's personal and more in depth. Then the next email we would send out would be the same kind of newsletter style, but the call to action this time would be to direct people to the Kickstarter page to be notified on launch. Then the, the 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 email after that again this longer newsletter style. So there's kind of within this s- section there's there's three long emails, welcome email and then your live email. So on this the kind of last longer email, we then direct people to the preview page of the Kickstarter or the Game Found page so that people can review the pledges and and sometimes people don't have their k- Kickstarter page ready to be previewed and reviewed by their community, but we still encourage people to include their pledges so that people have an understanding of how much the things will cost. And then finally, we have the live email. Um, so this is now live on Kickstarter. That's a very short one. So mm-hmm. we have your automated welcome email, which is short, three longer emails, and then your live email. Those all include resends as well. So we mm-hmm. would we, we do resend. We would encu- encourage people to resend as well. And then for the live campaign, we basically just do an email a week. And we kind of summarize everything that's happening. And then we would we try to focus um, <clears throat> pretty much an email a week. And then we do like one last 48-hour email, last chance mm-hmm. to back, short, shorter email. So very similar. So it's, it's like three or four emails and then like a, a final short one. Um, mm-hmm. So that's sort of the, the cadence of our email marketing services. So if, if you were to uh, bring us on uh, to, to do your email marketing, that's the type of stuff that we would set up and, and do. Yep. That's awesome. I, I, I think that you you have to send emails when it matters and a lot of people are very concerned you know and and not completely unfounded that they're very concerned about um bothering people they're they're worried that they have been working to develop this email list for a long time and it's a really important piece of the puzzle they believe that it's an important piece of the puzzle and they don't want to screw it up and so what they what they do is they they treat it like a porcelain doll that they don't want to <laughs> drop it and break it. You know what I'm talking about, Donnie? Like, how do you feel about and sending emails? I can absolutely to... speak to this. Um, mm-hmm. All the other stuff I'm, I'm learning myself <laughs> as, you know, a new employee, but this I can speak to because I have sat many times in the wee hours of the morning, like, what am I supposed to write to my email list? Um, just in my own personal projects. Um, and especially early on, when you first start trying to write those emails, you're like, what am I, like, I don't even know what to say. And, but what I found was people just want to hear about what you're doing, like what Mm -hmm. it is, like, even if it's the smallest little update, um, like I've been, I've been writing a book that goes along with the game project. And that one feels like all I did was add like a chapter, like, okay, but what can I like, okay, how do I, how do I can't show anything? I don't have any visuals for that without just giving away what I'm writing, which may just be garbage right now because I'm writing the rough draft or what have you. Um, so I was like, okay, well, what do I give people? I'm like, okay, for mine, I started writing it as give them just a quick update. Like here, here are the things that I'm working on, but also here's what I'm dealing with in life, whether it's good or bad. Like, Hey, this is just kind of where I'm at in life. And people really resound with that. They want to know the person behind what they're reading. And yeah. not everybody. There are the people that are just like, I just tell me about your project and I'm done, you yeah. know? And so when I've done my emails like that, I've actually segmented like, okay, here's just an introduction. This is what the email is about. The, you know, and here's what you're going to expect. The next section is like, okay, just a quick update on what's going on on the project. And in, in my case right now, what I'm writing, what, what I'm kind of talking about, and then go into more of like, I have a section that's really just about the lore of the story. Um, whether it be a little blurb from the chapters or something completely uh, separate that's not in the book that kind of adds to the world and you know something that if someone's interested in that they can look at that 
And then finally just closing out like, hey, this is what I'm going to be looking at doing in the coming month. Mm -hmm. And I found that to be the most helpful because that gives me something to write about next month. Yeah. Right. Yep. Definitely. So in and then you mentioned a, a portion about you personally. So can mm -hmm. what do you what sorts of things do you write about with you personally? Um you either know what I mean? things, like is it like a personal family update or um sometimes I try like not that? to get I try not to get too personal as far as like, I'm not dropping, you know, the names of my kids or, you know, things like that, but it's like, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, like I didn't get as far as I wanted to in this because, um, I had to help somebody move or I had my water heater gave out. So I focused mm -hmm. on that, you know, like just, just life happening, you know, or like, mm -hmm. you know what, we decided to take a week and go, go somewhere, you know, to go visit mm -hmm. family. So I didn't do much writing, you know, or whatever it is, or, you know, Things like that, that just mm -hmm. people relate to that. People understand yeah. that, you know, life isn't uh, clean and pretty all the time. Sometimes it's messy and it's okay, yep. you know. Um, so that's the kind of stuff I write about, you know, and it's, I don't, I don't know. Again, without getting like too nitty gritty where it gets uncomfortable, you know, I think about it like a conversation as much as I can. So. <laughs> yeah, this is very smart because I mean, that's kind of how I try to treat things as well. So um, one other thing I'll add to this is that every, everybody has their own style, you know, like um, for example, uh, Gabe Barrett's one of our longtime clients, you know, board game design lab uh, best with one games. He's got a solo game of the month. He's, he's like doing really, really great right now on game found with like every month he's raising like, Thirty to fifty thousand dollars, and and uh, it's just really cool to see. And you know, we've had lots of conversations about this. You know, just in the past about how I I want Gabe to be more to to say more. You know, and um, there was a game that I can't remember. It was a, a game, a solo game that I backed of his uh, person because I liked it a lot, which was um, related to Rome and um, the. He had, he was like, oh, you know, we raised more money than I thought. And this was in an update of his, we raised more money than I thought. So we're redoing various pieces of art and, um, we're basically investing more into, into the stuff and that's it. It's like, okay. It was like four <laughs> lines, Gabe, show me a picture, show me like four paragraphs, give me like three, four paragraphs. Like what in particular, you know, and that kind of thing. And I, I say this tongue in cheek because he just is, he is the type of person that says less. He says less and does more. That's just, that's just him. And mm -hmm. I think that his audience is going to, or already is resonating with his communication style. So his, his various campaigns may have one or two updates in, you know, across the entire campaign. He's running like a two week campaign once a month, you know, and like immediately starting on fulfillment and uh, right after and, and that kind of thing. And uh, it's just, um, it's really interesting because my style is very flowery. <laughs> you know, I write a lot and it's, it's really hard to write short emails for me. Um, I just have a lot to say. And, uh, so in that way, I'm kind of an opposite. Um, but the most important thing is that whoever you are, you embrace that. Don't try to come from the position of being like some faceless corporation that needs to, um, say all the right things to please all the people be yourself um, you know, hopefully, uh, your, yourself is somebody that, um, is likable, but, but I, I find it really, really difficult to put a, put a front on, uh, you know, put a, like a, it's like you're wearing a mask when you're in your emails. And then like, when you go to a convention, people are going to see you and they're not going to, you know, they're, they're just, it's not going to be the same. Right. Um, so right. whenever, if you meet me at a convention, this is who I am. Like you will. I will talk to you in the exact same way I talk to my microphone right now. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and that's, that's just how I try to be. And I've decided, you know, there, there are uh, the, when like Donnie, you're saying like when you come up with content um, it is sometimes just, you have to write about what you care about. And right. you know, it's the worry is like, other people might not care that my water heater went out or like, you know, for my, for myself uh, right after our Kickstarter, I, I, you know, had a, uh, a son, you know, this is back in 2021. Um, my son Isaac was born. And um, then uh, after, you know, a couple of a couple more months, we actually ended up moving. We were one of those California to Texas people. And um, 
it, it was like a huge impact on the project. Both of those things, huge and, and relevant. And so I try to, um, to keep things relevant. Like if there's no reason, like, for example, did we get sick or did we have family come into town or whatever? If it made an impact on the project itself, then I might share that. Um, obviously moving 1200 miles and, and lifting 15,000 pounds of stuff several times is going to have a significant, uh, impact on a project on a Kickstarter fulfillment. So, uh, but people actually really appreciated that. And then on the other, you know, on the other side of the coin, I would get so every once in a while, not, not very much. I can count them on one hand. People that were like, Oh no, not a person, not another personal thing, um, from this guy. <laughs> and that's okay. Like, I, you know, there are people that don't care about me that only care about the, the product and that's, that's okay. Like that's the relationship that they want. They would rather have a transactional relationship than an actual relationship. Right. Um, right. And so I that's, think that's, I just have to be okay with that. I think that's where like segmenting out your email really helps, you know, and especially if it's somebody you've had for a while. Um, like, so I try to write my emails when I do it, I kind of write it in a story fashion because that's how I like to write. So it's like, okay, that's what I'm like, I'm in the middle, like I said, I'm in the middle of writing a book. I'm in the first draft of that right now. And so my emails kind of reflect that. So, but that first paragraph or that first part, that is what people will see on their phone or, you know, on their laptop screen without scrolling, that's going to be like, Hey, this is what we're getting into. And, you know, they can then go to the section they want to read, Right. They can read it straight through if they want, or they can go to, okay, here's here's the project update. Okay, cool. That's all I want to read. I don't mm -hmm. care about the fluff. I just want to know what's going on with the project. Or someone's yep. like, you know, I really want to know more of the fluff because that that might link to something that's going on in the story because I'm really interested in that. And they can go and read that. Um, and it's it's like you, it's kind of along the, line, along the lines of what you said, you're going to write in your voice, right? Yep. And I was thinking about this when you're speaking, it's really easy to be like, I don't know what that is, but I always liken it to, it was something I heard Dan Povenmire say, who's been an animator for years. He's best known for Phineas and Ferb, but he said, you can't edit something if you don't write it. So you can always just write down thoughts of what you're going to put in the email and then just go back and like, okay, what do I want to put in there? What do I not want to put in? Um, it's easier to look at it that way when you're, when you take the battle out of your head and just put it down, like, okay, this is what I'm looking at. This is what I'm dealing with. And if it is like Gabe Barrett, where it's like four lines, awesome. That's something. Give your, give the people who gave you an email something back, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. yeah. So and I think th this is where it's also helpful bringing in like a third party, like us, because I think it can be difficult to write that email and you're, you're too close to the project and you, you're just kind of like creatively finished yep. with someone else with fresh eyes coming in. Oh, this is an interesting element of your project. This is interesting. This has happened here. You can kind of compile it all. We just had a client, um, Marcel of Dutch resistance. He's got a game, um, orange shall overcome. He's doing an expansion and he had the exact same thing. He just, he didn't know, I don't know what to do for my Kickstarter updates uh, or for my email. I've got this email list and I've only sent out one email and, um, uh, I don't know what to do. So he brought us back on because we did his pre campaign emails. And, you know, straight away, I was able to sort of kind of look at all his Kickstarter updates, find the key elements of it, put it all together and create an email that, um, mm. it was, it was fresh and kind of, it was dynamic and had everything there. Um, and I think it's just because you're kind of burnt out doing the Kickstarter, you're doing all these Kickstarter updates, you're res responding to comments, but to have someone else come in and be able to look at it objectively or from like a, more with clear eyes, I suppose, to put it all together, I think is helpful as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I find the same is true with ads. So like for myself, you know, I've said before on the podcast how I couldn't, I, I was having such a hard time. It was like writer's block to the max when it came time to write my deliverance ads on fa like Facebook ads. And I, I just handed it to you, Sean. I was like, Sean, please just do this for me because yes, I am the marketing guru guy and I can't write my own ads. Like just do it. And if it's, you know, 80% as good as I would have done them, then I'm so happy. Thank you for taking this off my plate. Um, <laughs> it was just, it was like taking all my, my mental bandwidth to actually do that. And it was just too much for me. Um, 
So, yeah. And, you know, I, I'll, I'll call back to mind uh, something that you were saying, Donnie, where people will skip to one section or another. Um, appropriately titling your sections is so important. Um, and you can actually copy, you know, you can replicate one, you know, last month's email, you can just copy it and then change the text. And I, I find that that's a great way to go. Um, because then you don't forget about like, oh yeah, I forgot the what's next section, you know, what's coming next month or whatever. Um, but I think that that's really great, but you're, you know, it's, it's really important to, you know, like if you if you say project update, you've got, if that's your section title or something like that, um, you've got the the actual information relevant to the project there. It doesn't start out with, you know, my water heater went out. Um, <laughs> and you know, it's just like, uh, what's relevant to the project, right? The more, the tighter, you know, for me, I actually will, um, personally for my emails, instead of giving people, I have a lot to say now because, you know, deliverance is doing lots of things and there's more to talk about and that kind of thing. But, um, so what I'll do is I'll break out like a character reveal, It'll be its own thing with the art piece. And then like we did this thing and then that will be its own section, like all game related. And, um, you know, we're going to origins and, uh, you know, boost seven, four five and a little detail about that. And then, um, you know, so that's kind of how I break out my project updates. If you will, I take the main most important things and then share them, uh, in their own sections. But, uh, but yeah, I usually have some kind of personal thing related to, um, or, you know, it, somewhere in there sometimes more often than others but um but yeah so uh mm. it's it's I, I think that um and and then to what you were saying sean where somebody can come in someone else that has fresh eyes that can just um you know pull together everything that you like you the problem i have as a creator is that i see everything and i'm like well everything is important and then you're like well this is what stands out to me and that's really really useful so you should always always have somebody that can at least be you know if it's a friend or a family member um you know like my spouse christy she is super helpful when it comes to stuff like this it's like i've got all this to talk about and she's like well talk about this thing you know focus on this thing and it, it really helps um you know somebody to bounce ideas off of when you're going to kickstarter and you're putting your page together and and all of that like i use my vendors people like my uh, chip cole my graphic designer Dan Maynard, my artist, um, you know, I've uh, game developers I work with that, um, you know, that can provide feedback. And then of course, Sean and Jacob, uh, you know, everybody at crowdfunding nerds is, is able to be really helpful too. Um, so bouncing ideas is so super duper important. Um, I think what's also helpful is if you approach your email with a particular theme in mind, mm -hmm. and one way to kind of structure your theme and everything is to think of what's the objective. So that single call to action, what are you trying to get people to do? And if you, yep. then you can kind of like, backwards engineer it. So it's like, okay, with this email, I want people to follow my Kickstarter page before it launches. That means I probably mm -hmm. should talk a little bit about uh, the yep. the design process and why I designed the game that it was uh, yep. and how we, how we got here. And then I also want to talk about, maybe I could talk about uh, my, my, my personal experience with Kickstarter and why I'm choosing to do this. And I've backed so many projects and these are the games that I love and th these are the games that you know, influence my, my game design. So those are the, that you start, you start thinking, and just an example mm -hmm. is if you start with a goal, what, what is that single call to action you want people to do? Then you can sort of backwards engineer your mm -hmm. entire campaign. So that's probably a good starting place. If you're kind of like, I don't know what to send an email out. It's like, yep. have a goal in mind and then kind of work from there. Absolutely. No, that's really... I feel, Sorry. Oh, no, I, was, I was just going to, just going to drop a knowledge bomb, you know? Um, Go ahead. No, you're so, good. <laughs> so bomb incoming, the most important thing the, the most important purpose for your email list is to win the right to communicate across multiple different channels. Um, that's the number one thing that you should be doing with the email list. You get them on the email, you share stuff once a month, but you can get them in your Facebook group, on your Discord community, in your Board Game Geek, um, you know, uh, so, yeah, as a subscriber and a lot of other places. And then you will be able to communicate once a month, but then also once a week on Facebook or really like a couple of times a week on Facebook in a group. Um, you know, regularly on Discord and and that kind of thing. So um, I find that that is so, so important. And so the call to action, the main call to action should always be like a rotating goal of like, I'm going to get people to follow or to hit the notify me on launch button on Kickstarter this month or, you know, or this, this particular email. And then the next one or the one previous, maybe I'm going to get people to join our Discord because we have a tabletop simulator mod 
that you can play or you can we made a digital way to play um or that kind of thing i find that is so super duper important and uh to um you know if one if you have like four sections in your email and let's just say you've got like one button and one picture in each of those sections that's probably more than you actually need but let's just assume like two overall buttons and then four you know one picture for each section each of those things are the things that people will click on they'll click on the buttons and they'll click on the pictures they will also click text links if uh they are very limited so maybe one text link per section at the most maybe you know one to one to three text links total in your email um all of the pictures and all of the buttons should be the same call to action, the same place, the same thing. All of them should be going to your Kickstarter page to get people to sign up or to your discord um, to get them to join or whatever. And you can have other links that are like text links to, you know, our Facebook group and discord server and board game geek and, you know, follow those places because you will have people that are like, Oh yeah, that's great. I've got, now I can follow them everywhere. But um, the main thing is like, I want you all on our board game geek page and what or whatever, right? It's like one call to action. For sure. And I was thinking about something Sean mentioned when you talked about um, finding that focus for your email. Uh, like what, what are you going to write about? You know, obviously the goal to build a community. Cause I, I think about it cause obviously Andrew, you're way far ahead in the game design process than where I'm at in my own personal projects. So I've had months where, like I didn't really do anything this month. So what do I write about? And Sean hit it mm -hmm. perfectly. It's like, okay, if I didn't really get to develop what I wanted to, why don't I talk about an a, a specific aspect of the game and make that the like, okay, there, it could just be something, you know, it's like, Hey, here's this cool mechanic that I think is going to work well. It may not even be in the final product later on, but it's like, Hey, this is what I'm playing around with right now. You know, like, even if I didn't get to get to it between the last email and this email, talk about it. You know, um, I find so I, cool. I love that. I love that idea so much. <laughs> it's just because, I because I mean, a, a lot of, a lot of the clients we have that I've seen so far, um, and just people I talk to, um, which isn't much, but you know, the people I talk to, <laughs> they, we have our normal job. And the game design project is a side of that. So sometimes our job and our families and our life gets in the way. Like if something's got to move, it's going to be our, our project, our hobby right now, because we're not getting paid for it. It's a hobby right now, you know? Um, so being able to talk about a small aspect of that with people will get them invested in it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that I, I've done that a few times where it's like, okay, I haven't got a chance to actually work on this, but here's a cool aspect or here's a character in the game that I think is kind of cool, you know? And then the fluff mm -hmm. blurb that I put later on, if people want to know more about that character will be related to that character, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's, and that's something I found very helpful. And I'm glad Sean hit on it. Cause it reminded me of that. Like, no, that's really good. Especially for someone who's starting out. That's mm -hmm. like, okay, I just didn't get to it this month. Like, what can I do? Um, and the other side of that, having an audience, having an email list gives you an accountability to do something in your project that I found where it was the reverse of that. It's like, instead of saying like, oh, what can I tell these people? It's like, no, they're, they gave me the right to be in their inbox. I have, feel like I have an obligation to give them something. So I'm going to go work on something, you know, whether it's for an hour of the month, you know, just something. Um, Cause then it's like, okay, here's, here's something I worked on. It was only for an hour. It's kind of weird. It doesn't work well, but I think it's interesting or, Hey, I worked on it for an hour. I think it's pretty great. What do you guys think about it? I'm trying to get some yeah. feedback back, you know? Um, you know, I, um, those are the two I like things that. I found that work. That's awesome. Um, as far as, uh, diligence is something that I, I'd like to touch on. So what you were kind of getting at is like, I'm not sure what to say uh, to, to my email list this month, you know, and that, that might be a common situation that hits all of us. Um, but you, you, you know, you've got to send that email, you know, you've got to think about something, you've got to send something. And 
I think that that's an excellent suggestion to give people some, some, uh, just a little bit of insight into how the game is, uh, works or what your vision for the game is or a particular mechanic, you know, like the hook of the game and, and how it, how it works or maybe a little bit about the theme or, you know, something like that. Um, you know, even if you've shared some information like that before, you've got new people on your email list now that have never heard that. You've got a lot of people that had never opened that email and a lot of people that did open that are like, oh yeah, that's right. You know, that would like a refresher, you know? So um, I think that, uh, that that's, that's a, a lot of really, I mean, some really, really solid tips. Um, but the thing I wanted to mention is related to diligence that you were kind of skirting around. And, um, and I think it's worth to just bullseye this one. If you send an email once a month, every single month, and you're doing the things you need to do to kind of keep it pruned and whatnot, it will reward you. Um, versus like, if you don't send an email once a month, like if you, if you're not diligent sending it at a regular cadence, then you will not be rewarded when it comes time to actually, you know, go to Kickstarter. So like for, for deliverance, we went to Kickstarter in 2021, we funded, and I told everybody that I would give you an update. Um, on the final day of every month, it's when you can expect my Kickstarter update. And every single month, we've always given the update at the end on the final day of the month. And like only one month, I think it was Easter, was, uh, you know, Easter holiday observed in the US was like March 31st. And I'm like, guys, I, my wife will kill me if I write an update today. Expect it three days later, you know, like the pun. And, um, and so uh, <laughs> then I, uh, you know, but otherwise it's just been very uh, consistent. I finally, uh, the first time since like 2018 that I missed an email uh, for a month was January of this year. So 2024, January, 2024. And I was like, Sean, help. Um, <laughs> so he he's kind of coming in to shore up some of my weaknesses, which has been really, really awesome. Um, but yeah, so like just being diligent is really, really important. And, uh, you know, our email um, open rates and everything like that, that is a reflection of people um, appreciating content and whatnot. Like we've got 44 to 51 percent open rates um, for our for our main list, which is which I have not been paid a lot to write these things. I'm certainly paying Mailchimp a whole lot more than um, than I am earning from my email list until we launch our next Kickstarter. And what I hope is that we we fund immediately from our email alone, like because all the people on the list believe in the project, believe in me, really love the project, I really love the game and, and that sort of thing. That is when I will finally, if you if you want to call it this, uh, cash in on on all of that investment. And so, you know, my if my I have mentioned before I want to make a million dollars in this campaign. Uh, who knows if we'll get there, but um I'm doing what I can, kind of controlling what I can in order to do the very best I can. And I think diligence is a very important piece of that. Um, regardless of how big or small. The fact that it even impacts your Google Sender score frequency and the, the cadence in which you're sending out emails uh, does determine your sender score. So you do want to be sending out emails consistently. Now, Andrew, right. maybe before we wrap up, I think it'll be worthwhile covering subject lines. Would you mind mm -hmm. maybe looking at some of your highest open rate emails and then sure. maybe... A examining the subject lines and maybe there's some commonalities we can pick out in terms of how to craft a really solid s subject line that gets a high open rate. So, um, yeah, let's look at, uh, this one, 51.7% open rate. I do believe that the subject line is the most important thing that you will include, um, in, you know, it just in, in any email, um, the most important piece of the email is the subject line. So this one was give feedback, get signed art plus painted minis with an angel. So I always do this angel emoji. I, I think it's important to use an emoji in your subject line just because you we can. It's, you know, 2024, like get with the times. Um, uh, but I, <laughs> I've used that angel emoji because deliverance is angels versus demons. So I just wanted people to know this is this is deliverance. So, I you know, the angel emoji has been the thing that I've used. But uh, this one was really impactful. Because it was the call to action was included in the email, and the you know there was like an obvious reward: get signed art and painted minis. Like, of course, who wouldn't want if you were a Deliverance fan? Who wouldn't want a signed art piece of Deliverance, right? Or painted miniatures? Um, and so this was actually a way that I got feedback from my audience, um, and then I said, hey, you know, we're gonna give uh, winners, we're gonna have three winners, and I basically did a giveaway. 
but not a giveaway that is, you know, trying to get emails, but a giveaway that is meant to just simply bless my people, you know, reward the people for being fans and, and that kind of thing. So this was a really, really big one because, um, yeah, they, you know, people like free stuff for things that they, that they love. So, um, and one thing I would also keep in mind as well is that often when we do emails for, for our clients is that they will, the sender will be their company name. And if someone has signed up for a game project, um, let's say Deliverance, for example, but then they're receiving emails from Loan Games, it can be right. somewhat, they were like, who is this? So what I often do in the subject line of those emails, I will put like Deliverance hyphen, mm-hmm. and then I will give a subject. So people know this is the, the board yep. game that I signed up to because they could be like, what's this weird email coming to me from mm-hmm. this like weird name? I've, I have no idea. So you, just keep that in mind. You might want to uh, put change your subject, uh, your sender name to the actual game name yes um, so or um, you want to include it in the subject line yeah so there's this uh for you know a lot of emails you've got a subject line and you've got preview text as well and so what i always do in the preview text i always say you know it's it's like a the it's like a newspaper deliverance insider may 2024 edition that's where i put my um my my board game's name that people would find valuable um without having to also, and then also it comes from Andrew at play deliverance.com. So, uh, you know, from Andrew Lowen. So you're not getting, you know, the official Lowen games, whatever it's, this is the, the person, you know, and the thing you care about is where it like, tr- I try to include that in, you know, multiple places. So, um, that's a really good point. Really good point. So, uh, let's see the next one. So the never openers, by the way, that uh so this one 51.7% is one of the highest that I've had. Um so that one we re- we just I'd use that for the never openers. And also 11.1% never opener open rates is actually some of the highest that we've had. So never openers don't open very often. <laughs> um so I did but I did a resend for May and whenever you resend you should always change your subject line. Um so this is and and I made it a little more on the nose. So Sean just to your point uh, my my resend deliverance news. Give feedback, win prizes. Uh, again with the angel, uh, the angel face. <laughs> so I, uh, I I will also say there's a little bit of hidden uh, hidden jitsu in in this going on where um, people tend to remember the first three words and the last three words of a subject line. So if your subject line is six words, they'll remember the whole thing. If it's seven words. They'll generally put the first three and the last three together. That's what their brain will do. And I don't remember where I heard this, but it is, it just rings so beautifully true. The closer your subject line is to exactly six words, the the better, the more impact. Well, I, I do know that there's a reason why when you type something to Google, you only get four suggestions. Okay. It, because there's, that's like the magic number. The four options is the one that kind of is optimal for you to actually take action on something. Uh-huh. That's interesting. Four oh, uh, options, there's always really are. Good. Never more, never less. <laughs> that was my really bad Yoda impression. <laughs> awesome. uh, so this one was uh, about a 49% open rate, um, and it was just, oh, snap, help, in all caps, uh, with angel emojis. <laughs> the angel. So, <laughs> so we <laughs> can't get away from that. Um, so well, let's I, I, think, see. I think with that, though, yeah. is you're staying consistent with a part of what your audience will expect. So even mm-hmm. if it is the angel emoji, you're being consistent with that. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, this 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 one. We need your help. Will you answer? Um, so again, this is seven words. So p- people's brains will be doing doing this. We need your. Will you answer? And um, so if the seventh word was like the most, if rather if the word right in the middle was the most important word, I might want to restructure that. You know, uh, will you answer is kind of the the key for me. So that one, um, let's see, where's my percent opens? We've got total opens, total clicks. Um, I want to say this was like 44 and 44 and change. Um, kind of an average one for us. And then I changed it on the resend to, come on, loading wheel of fun. <laughs> it's coming. The caterpillar uh, chasing its tail. Please don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this one is, do you love deliverance? Please help. And I actually did prayer hands instead of the angel. Um, so See, there's all your uh, unsubscribers right there. You changed it up. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So yeah. And, then, and as long as people are getting, 
you know, um, are, are gaining value, they generally want to subscribe. So those are some of our campaigns that we've done. Um, I want to say, you know, I, I so can, Jen, I'm kind uh, of getting a, a formula here. So it's six words, which usually raises a, a question or asserts something. And then you end with an emoji. <clears throat> That's sort yeah. of the kind of general formula. If you want, yeah, if you so want like a and, starting point. Yeah. And then also, you know, you can, you can use the email to explain what's in this thing. So that's what we did for March. We deliverance scenario teaser, raid boss and more. And with like a scared face. Oh my. Um, so that's, uh, another, other style that you can do where it's like, you're, you're telling people why they should open this email. Um, I want to say we had a, like a 45% open rate for, um, for this as well. And then let's see how I changed it for the resend. Oh, we actually did a never openers for, for March. So let's see. The resend was loading wheel of fun again. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> listening to this podcast on audio is like, what are we talking about? Loading wheel of fun. It's riveting. I'm sorry, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, Deliverance special convention event and scenario teaser with Angel. So I have a question for you. So yeah. with my subject line, what I typically do, since I'm doing more writing right now, I start with the name of the project um, and then I will follow with, you know, like what the email is about, but then I'll usually tag it with something kind of fun. I actually took it a lot from, if you remember the old Rocky and Bullwinkle show, the yeah. fractured fairy tales, uh -huh. that's how I actually structure my subject line where like the first part of it will be like what it actually is. And then, or, you know, a rose of any other name still smells as sweet or whatever, you know, something that it, it's <laughs> yeah, a wordplay yeah. on that. Um, so do you think that that is something I should stop doing or something I should switch around? Like, how would you so structure that? The, the first question would be like, what, is, what are your open rates? If your mm -hmm. open rates are, are good, then I would say that is more of a style preference than anything. Um, you okay. know, if you've got 40% open rate or above, then um, that's, I, I think that's fun. Uh, but generally, I would say the closer you get to six words, the better. And okay. maybe what you can do is you can use the preview text to be that alternate or, or very importantly, you can use the, uh, the main headline in the actual email itself to be kind of that, um, that, you know, that, that alternate, um, title, you know what I mean? So, gotcha. okay. uh, yeah, so that, that's a, I think a very creative thing to do. Um, but you could probably, um, maybe, you know, just keep those e email subject lines shorter so that people can just, you know, absorb them in really bite size increments. Um, oh, and, and there, there is one other thing that I really wanted to mention that was a big deal with the client that I talked with. They were sending emails that got like 24% open and it was like, hey, follow our Kickstarter and 24% of the list opened. And then he noticed what time they sent it. They sent it Friday at 1 p.m. And like, that's the time that people are trying to wrap stuff up and get off work so they can get home and do all the fun stuff. And they're thinking about the weekend. They're thinking about what they're going to do. They're not thinking about necessarily like what emails they have. And so I, I asked them to resend and my, my gut said that I bet the resend email is going to actually have a higher open rate than the original one because they sent it Friday at 1 PM. So, uh, just in general, you want to, um, send emails i find monday through thursday at 5 a.m pacific standard time you know maybe 4 45 a.m pacific standard time you know whatever is perfect because at 5 a.m pacific standard you've got 8 a.m on the east coast and everybody likes to check their emails in the morning and uh, so i find that that's very useful also saturday saturday morning is a decent time to send an email um, so if you, if you send an email on Tuesday and you resend on Thursday, or you send an email on Monday, you resend another email on Saturday, or you send Wednesday and Saturday, you know, I've, I worked for this one client, um, that sent an email every Wednesday and every Saturday, just like a spammy sales, like buy our product email on Wednesday and another one on Saturday. And it was, it's just funny because, um, it just, it worked so well, this just worked so well. So <laughs> Um, but yeah, people tend to open their emails at, at those times. Um, if you have to send one in the afternoon, like if it's Thursday and it's already like 2 p.m., 3 p.m., like just send it rather than waiting. I would rather have an email go out on Thursday, period, than on, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, but I still find that the resend on Saturday is is worthwhile.
So, and over time, you can look into the analytics of where, who, at what times people open your emails, and you can sort of gauge where, you know, what's the optimal yep. time to do it. So, something you can yeah. certainly work out. Yep, yep. Nine out of ten times, it's going to be six a.m. Uh, at, at whatever whatever <laughs> time zone. It's like so many so many people will wake up and check their emails at that time. You know, six a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's just um, like the main, I don't know what it is about that time. You know, everybody is just getting into work or checking stuff on their cell phone right before work. And uh, it seems to be, you know, uh, really effective. So um, I um, actually think, oh, go ahead, Donnie. Sorry, I just had one last thing. I was thinking about it when you're talking about, I'm going to flip us way back to when you're talking about diligence. Um, so what would be your advice, um, you or Sean, um, to someone who has not been diligent with emails up to this point, like, so say they missed a couple of months. I happen to yep. be in that boat because I had technical, I'm having technical issues with my email servers and stuff, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, cause it can be very defeating. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's yeah. just anything in life. Right. It's like, oh man, I wasn't diligent. So it's the easier thing is to give up. Right. So what would be your advice to someone who's in that boat? Yeah. Who feels like, like I, I can't even approach these people because I forgot to send them emails mm -hmm. the last two months. What would you advise that? Now, that's a good question. So the the first and I've I've dealt with a, a lot of cases where it's been exactly like that. In fact, um, the very first Kickstarter campaign I ever did was for the Isofarian Guard, and I, the very funny enough, the very first Kickstarter project I ever backed was the Stonebound Saga in 2015, mm -hmm. and uh, by the same company. And the Isofarian Guard was like a kind of a re a reintegration of the theme into a different style of game. Um, you know this world that they had built, and I was I actually sent emails for them as uh, in 2019 and they hadn't sent an email out in like two years. And I, I think the most important, and they had a killer open rate for the first email that I sent. It was, um, uh, something like stonebound. Will you answer the call question mark with like a gem inside the, the subject line. And it, it was like the most powerful, way that I could address their audience, the most direct. It's like, if you have at all played the Stonebound Saga, um, if you were at all interested in the Isofarian Guard, you will know the word Stonebound. Like, Stonebound, will you answer the call, was a, um, a big thing for them. I think that the more on the nose you can be, um, you know, for example, like your project is called Seraphima, and we're definitely going to hear more about it. I can't wait. Uh, the convergence of the fireflies. I've been right? trying to like, oh, well, let's talk about the subject. Not talk. I don't want to name drop my project. <laughs> but you Dude, did your it. project is. I'm excited. Very, very excited about your project. When the time comes, like I will be backer number one. So, um, all right, book or game, whatever. <laughs> but uh, okay. so anyway, yeah. So anyway, the um, I would say that uh, where was I? I'm like, I'm like what? You know, convergence of fireflies. There we go. So um, be on the nose, like uh. Seraphima, the Seraphima is something or other. You know what I mean? Like very, very thematically engaging for your people that know what the Seraphima is, you know? Right. And, uh, you know, versus like something like, sorry, I've been out for a while or, or whatever, you know, like you just want to be as on the nose as you can so that people will, will open and be like, oh, yeah, that's right. I, you know, there's this project. Um, so that's that's generally my advice. I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Sean. Yeah, I'll probably just say segment. I think that's probably the, the most important thing. If you haven't been segmenting and you're you've kind of stopped sending emails and you're coming back, I think the first thing you should do is kind of review who's been opening your emails and kind of weed those people out and just start segmenting. That's probably yeah. the the main main thing I would recommend doing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the main thing is like if you have built um uh, some rapport with your with the people on your email list then it's going to be a lot easier to kind of do uh, to kind of win them back versus like if you've never sent an email before and it's been like three months and you've never sent an email to these people, then uh, that's when they won't know who you are when you sent that email. But if they at one point did know who you were, then it's a lot easier to, um, you know, to get them to remember that. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, honestly, I feel like this email marketing stuff, we could design an entire course about email marketing and it would just be filled with value. Um, but, uh, but hopefully this, this podcast provides enough direction for you guys. Oh, I want to add one more thing um, before we go. 
the subject line and the whole email, just make it like oozing with theme. The more thematic you can make your subject line, the more interesting you can make your email like theme wise. I think that you're, that people tend to appreciate that. Um, the calls to action shouldn't be like, check us out on Kickstarter or whatever. Like it, it should, you can have calls to action that say follow on Kickstarter or follow, follow us on Facebook or whatever. But I find the more thematic question is it just does better, you know, instead of um, notify me on launch, it's like, you know, Stonebound, will you answer the call? It, it's a more interesting um, thing. So, it, you know, especially the subject line, I think that it it should not be, you should it should not be so boring as the, you know, May newsletter or, you know, June company newsletter. It's a uh, very, you know, it's, it's difficult to make that interesting, you know, um, certain companies can do that. And, you know, they make a habit of that and kind of cut through the noise. Like the Stone Meyer newsletter is something I receive each month and I look forward to opening that because I'm a big fan of all their games. They've built a little bit of an empire uh, over over time with their products and they've earned their reputation and all of that. So I will seek the the thing out. Like if I haven't read it yet, I will go find it eventually at some time during the month and then seek it out. But I mean, it's it's just a lot easier to get people in to, you know, with with a theme, a thematic, you know, hook. Hmm. So that's I think advice. that's probably <laughs> enough for now, right? We've gone an hour and, yeah. and I'm sure that people have lot. things to do. <laughs> so we're going to actually have Robot Richard send us out. Let's do it. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's episode of Crowdfunding Nerds. For more resources, articles, and to listen to past podcasts, please visit us at crowdfundingnerds.com. And if you have a crowdfunding question, we also have a page on our site where you can send a message directly to us. Please visit crowdfundingnerds.com forward slash question. And if your question is a great question, we may include it in a future podcast. Thank you all again for listening to this week's episode, and we'll see you next week. Stay nerdy. Stay nerdy.